caught in the crossfire. <laughs> Well, hello, my lovies. I told you I would not be gone long. <laughs> so we're going to go over this video, which is from 1023. So enjoy, guys. But it's getting there. And, and, and I, I have gray. You can see it. I'm getting gray. So I'm like super excited of that is like I'm going to have like a cool like gray streak in my hair. <laughs> yes, I get excited for being like 40. I can't help it. Can we just take a bet on how long it's been since Shannon's washed her hair? With everything going on in the world and your own hardship, does it ever question your faith in God? No, because it's like written in the Bible, this stuff would happen. You hate your grace? I love it. Gray means wisdom. So I look at my grays and I'm like, oh, look at my wisdom is finally showing. Shannon, you have the wisdom of a walnut. Okay, slow yourself down. I'm 41 officially. Yay! <laughs> well, happy birthday, Christina. <laughs> I, I I love gray hair. I'm excited for getting gray hair. It's going to be awesome. Can you imagine having gray hair and finally, like, you don't have to, you know, bleach your hair if you want to color. Your hair is a really cool color. It's, like, naturally, like, bleached. No, it's actually gray. It's not blonde on any level. <laughs> It mixes with the blonde. Yeah, man. I just like, I, I don't know. I like my gray hair. I like it. My wisdom is showing. Walnuts for brains. Plus, I always wanted my hair to be like silver anyway. But that's hard to get your hair silver because silver, you got to like get like that platinum blonde and then put the like gray in it. In that's actually not the process. They, um, they tone your very blonde hair until it's an icy gray. Embrace the gray, exactly. Embrace aging. So many people now are like, I need to get Botox here and here and here. And I'm like, why? Those lines on your face, those wrinkles on your face tells a story about what kind of person you are. <laughs> oh my God, my cats watch their paws in the drinking fountain. <laughs> Gavin, he, he, he likes drinking water from the faucet. That's like his like main method of water. Probably because he doesn't have a water dish that's cleaned out daily and replenished. Maybe that's why he's drinking out of the sink. From the faucet. Botox helps with severe migraines. See, there's a difference though. That's for your migraines, not for your like aesthetics. Oh, thank you, Hunter. I can't afford Botox anyway, so I have no choice but to embrace it. <laughs> I don't, I don't want, I don't, like, I don't, like, have you noticed with a lot of people who do get Botox, they're, like, face, like, it, like, elongates their face? It's bizarre. My Irish uncle worked outside all his life. His face and wrinkles were amazing. See, it tells a story. Embrace. I, I, I am, like, for body positivity and, like, embracing your age and, like, not being influenced by the plastic surgeons and, you know, like... Look what Botox did to Madonna's face. That's all I have to say. Okay, Madonna doesn't look like that because of Botox, you dope. She looks like that because she's had facelift after facelift after facelift. She's had everything done cosmetically that you could possibly think of. It's not Botox, dope. Look what Botox did to Madonna's face. You don't look right with it. Women who do lip injections and stuff like that look weird when they get old and stop having it done. <laughs> At least you have nice skin and don't use filters. No, I, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't know if I have nice skin. I have like some, I don't know. I, I, I definitely see the age in like right here and like right here and it's starting like right here. Maybe if you washed your face every night and did a little bit of a skincare routine, you wouldn't have those problems, but you won't even wash your own ass. So that's asking too much. So I'm, I'm seeing it, but like, I don't mind it so much. What do I have right here? Red fuzz. Red fuzz. Nah, I just like aging gracefully. It's a good thing you age. 
you know, right now I'm currently working with my therapist over empty nesting. It's weird. Well, I can tell that this is going to infuriate the fuck out of me. Weird when your kids grow up and they're like, hey, I, I gotta get out of the house and live my life, and you're like, but I love you. I love you so much that I let my boyfriend abuse you for years. And guess what? Your kids didn't get up and go off to college, empty nester. They got taken by CPS because you couldn't do your job as a mother. Nice try, though. You can't hold on to your children forever. Uh, they're not exactly ready to leave the nest at 14 and 16. CPS took them. I wish I could. I'll be there for them forever, but... I can't hold on to them. Legally, you have no rights to your own children. Let that sink in, Shannon. How often do you talk to them every day? All the time? Bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, William and Zach is about to be 17 and 15. And they're always busy doing something. Yeah, it's called living their lives instead of being locked in their rooms with a video game and dirty sheets on, with a mattress on the floor. They're always out doing something because they finally have a family that takes them to do things and takes them on fun excursions and does shit like that. Shit you never did with your kids, ever. And if you did take them anywhere, you and Rev were drunk and just bothered by the kids. You are horrible people. The new food stamp rules? Yeah, I wish the Democrats actually did something about that, because it's going to hurt so many people. Your kids are still babies, seven and three. Y yeah, that's exactly how teens are. They're just like, they just, they got their own life. So. Finally, they have their own life away from you and Jason. Oh, 27, 20, 19, and 10. Oh my gosh, you got a baby, baby. Four is your favorite age? My favorite age is probably like nine to 12. Um, because they, you start seeing like who they're gonna be, like their personality is like almost fully developed by then. And I'm excited for, to see how my boys, you know, grow up. Like, I'm excited to see them, you know, go off to college and I miss mine. Mine is youngest is 24. Yeah, you're always gonna miss your kids. I once said that being a mother and being in a mother's head is like a thousand ways to die because you're constantly thinking about all the ways your child can die always because you're worried about them constantly. And and now that they're almost all fully grown up, it's like even harder because you don't have any control over them really anymore. That's right. You have no control over them because you don't even have any parental rights to them. Like, I remember when I just had my oldest, William. Oh my God. I was like, I, I didn't get any sleep because I was constantly looking in the bassinet to make sure he was breathing. I like always like, are you breathing? Are you alive? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure every mother does that. I did because SIDS is a very real, very scary thing. <laughs> and then after the second kid, you're kind of like, yeah, he's, he's good. But the fir your first baby, you're constantly checking on them and not getting any sleep and being like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I did it with both of my babies because again, SIDS is a very real fucking thing. You did the same thing? <laughs> I thought that was a me thing. No. No. A lot of, actually, um, Rosie O'Donnell talked about that. How when she first became a parent, she was just constantly looking at her son and making sure he's alive constantly. <laughs> I'm missing the humor in this, Shannon. All of that lost sleep? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So for the new mothers out there, that's probably going to happen to you. And, um, just look at it as instincts. And at least you're attentive to your little one. Horses off... Which is a hell of a lot more than we could say for you now, isn't it? I can do the same. It's called maiden mare syndrome. I was that way with my daughter. 
well, the thing is, is like, I shouldn't have worried so much because William was like born a really big baby. He was like almost 10 pounds when he was born. Um, and, and it was funny. He like the day he was born, he could hold his head up. I'd never had problem with holding his head. How are they're good. They're really good. And they're getting great A's. Um, my youngest Zachary, he's getting straight A's. Um, he's on the honor roll. Uh, William is going through school. He's got good grades. And um, he's currently also at the same time working on getting his degree for game development. Wow, good for them. It sounds like they're really thriving in their new home. Imagine if their own parents treated them the way these people do. Because I could almost bet that Zachary was not on the honor roll when he, he lived with them. It's funny how we drive ourselves crazy. Mine was almost 10 pounds too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first kid, we want to do everything perfect. The kids after that, we are just like, ah, whatever, you'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Like, yeah, you'll live. It, it <laughs> he was a big baby. He was a big baby. And I, I got induced because I got induced like um, two weeks before he was due. Can you guys imagine Shani in full-blown labor? <laughs> With the 10-pound baby. William probably just flew right out, but I mean, it would be, don't mind my dog, it would be so funny to see Shani in actual pain. <laughs> That's real pain. Childbirth is real pain, but we all know she got the epidural as soon as she possibly could because she's Shani, and that's Shani. Because he was such a big baby. <laughs> and, and it took me 25 hours to finally crown. So I was up all the night after having, I was I was up the night before too, cause I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be a do, induced. I'm gonna have my baby. I, like tomorrow I'm gonna have a baby. So I didn't sleep the night before. I think he'd make a great uh, DJ. That would be so fun. I'll, 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 I'll just be the singer sitting there and just having fun. Shani, I know you think you have a really good voice but you don't. And if there's a DJ, they don't need a singer. You dope. But <laughs> yeah, he is working on getting a job. How long does that take? I thought he had so much anxiety about even applying to a job because of his mental health that he couldn't handle it. Guess what? The only person that diagnosed Rev with all of his mental illnesses was Shani. Shani diagnosed him. He does not have a real diagnosis, which is why he can't get disability. He ain't getting no job. Get the hell out of here. And me, I kind of, I try my best to, what is this? Oh, okay. Nobody will have kids with me, but it leaves me lots of free time. So is empty nesting. Okay, I'm going to say it again. What you're dealing with is not empty nesting. What you're dealing with is your kids were snatched away from you because you were not good for them. Stop calling it empty nesting. In fact, I'll get a I'll get a real definition for you. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, Christina. That would be fun. I I I I love karaoke. He'd love it. I'd love it. God, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm seeing even more grays. Like, there's one right right there coming in. And then you look here and, like, a peekaboo gray. Right there, it's that hair. You probably do see it. But you get on the other side, not so much of the gray. It's mostly here. It's very hard to see the grays through the grease, but uh, no one cares, I can promise. You seem to be doing well today. Hopefully you're not in much pain. I've been a pain patient for 23 years. I'm actually really good. Um, well, my knees really hurt. Your knees today. are screaming, I bet, at this point, holding up that uh, body of yours on that skeletal system. And I haven't done anything, so my back ain't hurting yet. But I'm sure if I did something, my back would be horrible. You've been a pain patient for 23 years. How long has it been? God, I can't even count. Like, I got diagnosed with fibro at 19, so like 20, 21 years. 
pain patient. Funny, you didn't look like you were in that much pain when you had all that money and you were getting all dolled up and eating for feeders and all the other disgusting things you've done. Oh, let's talk about OnlyFans. Were you a pain patient during your OnlyFans very short stint? I don't believe that you're in the amount of pain that you say that you're in. I think that you're in pain because you're fat. And I'm just going to be as blunt as that. Um, I think if you lost weight, you'd feel a lot better. But we all know that's never going to happen. So wish on a fucking star. My grandmother had a skunk line in her hair. It was dark with one strip of gray. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome, Christina. I've been in pain since 14. Only been going to a pain clinic for two. Uh, bless your heart. It sucks, too, especially when you're trying to find the meds that work with you. Thought the fibro was when you was married to Chris. Mm -mm. It was before him. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. <clears throat> Shani's like, oh, I'm time. so sorry you're going through that. Back to me. <laughs> And it's only gotten worse. Well, I have fibromyalgia and osteoarthritis. Um, which I can say for a fact that arthritis is way more painful than fibro. It, it makes a fibro way worse, though. And it's We know everything that comes out of Shani's mouth is a lie. So I don't have fibromyalgia or osteoarthritis. So if you, any, if any of you guys do, could you please educate me on how that actually works? Can she tell the difference or is she just lying again? Like, how does that work? Is one worse than the other? I, I, I honestly am completely uneducated on it. So I don't want to speak on it. I just think that everything that she says is a lie, so I have to question everything. Kind of weird because, like, I there's like different types of pain, and I go through all of the different types of pain, so I know what is bothering me at the time. Is it my fibro that's making me feel miserable, or is it my osteo? Ah, uh, it's my osteo. So again, tell me how you can tell the difference without going to the doctor and, and getting that diagnosed properly. <laughs> I mean, I'm still in pain. Don't get me wrong. I don't think I'll ever not be in pain. Um. Oh, I know. You'll always be in pain. Poor victim, Shani. You get a fentanyl patch and hydromorphine? Uh, I I told my doctor I didn't want to get on anything like that, like codeine or like um, opiates. And or, that you know. is a huge lie. You love opiates. I have videos of you shaking your Vicodin bottle and... All that other shit. What are you talking about? You don't like opiates. You don't like morphine. If you could get your hands on that shit, you would have your hands, your grubby little hands on it so fast, it wouldn't even be funny. Gabapentin was what they gave you to shut you up because it's the least addictive out of all of the pain medications. Still a controlled substance, and uh, I don't buy the I don't want to be on opiates bullshit at all because we all know you, Shiny. You, you, you enjoy drugs. Nothing that's horribly, you know, addictive. I didn't want to get on. That's why I'm on what I am on. Um, but if it gets worse, I might have to be forced to go through it. But I just... Oh, yes. They're going to for force you to go get on narcotics. That's what they do. They force you. I don't want to be addicted to anything. Other than caffeine. Yes, you are addicted to caffeine, Delta 8, and cigarettes also. So those are your three at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it gets that bad. You know when you'll need them. That's what I did. Yeah. Oh, thank God, Gucci. Yeah, I don't want to be addicted to pain meds. I don't like the symptoms of, of the withdrawal is like... If you were put on a pain medication and wanted to come off of it, you would be tapered off slowly so you did not experience withdrawal by a doctor. Funny that you know with what withdrawal feels like though, right? An automatic like, no. I, I, I kind of like to stay as natural as possible. Oh, really? I didn't know that Delta 8 and cigarettes were considered holistic. 
even though, you know, opium is nature, comes from the poppy flower, but no, I don't, I don't want to be addicted to that. Plus, plus, it makes me throw up. So, I'm feeling better because the Vicodin kicked in, but there's this dumb bitch on my page, and I'm just doing this for my audience, is saying that I'm lying about this jaw thing, right? And saying, I'm not on antibiotics, I'm diabetic. So, if, if you can see right here, that clearly says penicillin. Obviously, can you focus a little bit better? Focus a little bit better. When I pull back, you can see it. See? It says penicillin. And then my other pill says, oh, can you focus on that a little bit better? It says hydrocodone acetaminophen and it's a quantity of like 10. But as you can see, I have the pills. I can, you know, I have them. So if I have these pills that are obviously subscribed. That would be prescribed, Shannon. Why would I be lying about my jaw? First of all, why would I be lying about my jaw? And why the fuck? Tell us more about how you're so anti-opiate because you seem to have enjoyed them in the past, Shannon. <laughs> I tried all the non-narcotic meds and got a stomach ulcer. I feel you there. I really do. I get heartburn. Why do you have an ulcer now too, Shannon? Burn a lot to the point that I avoid certain foods to not get the acid reflux, like tomato sauce. Like I love, I love it. Don't, I love it. It tastes so good. But the heartburn makes it not worth it anymore. <laughs> Weren't you and Jason just talking about how you were having meatball subs for dinner? <laughs> but you can't eat it. All right, have a good one. No amount of makeup can hide your nature. No, I'm not wearing any makeup. You take a prescription for that heartburn? Yeah, I don't. I probably should. I gotta talk to my doctor about that. Like, I'm suffering from heartburn, Doc. Like, I feel bad for him because it's like, every time I go to him, it's like a new problem that I'm presented to him. <laughs> I feel bad for your doctor, too, because you're an absolute hypochondriac. And by the way, you can get heartburn medicine over the counter. It doesn't have to be prescribed. Like, <laughs> so Shannon, how are you doing? I, uh, well, you think we should up your gabapentin? Yes. Yes, sir. I do. Of course she wants to up the gabapentin. Sure, Doc. Any symptoms you're having? <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I know. We're all falling apart. This has to be the Great Tribulation because so many people are going crazy. Like, mental health in this country and in this world is really bad. And you know it because if you actually go to YouTube and you play these cop videos, you can see how mentally ill this world is. Have I watched G's last live? He was man manic. No, I don't watch any of his videos. You're on 800. I'm on 600 milligrams three times a day. It's almost empty, too. No. So. How much do you want to bet that Shani's calling her doctor and uh, getting a refill or asking for a refill early? Because I'd bet my life on it. What I really like is my muscle relaxants the cyclobenzaprine. That stuff is awesome. That's re it's really nice. <laughs> he makes you brush three times a day. <laughs> Did you brush your teeth today? We we are done eating. You have to brush your teeth, dear. Are you going to brush your teeth? Um, do you and Rev even own a toothbrush and toothpaste? Because I, I don't think that's on the uh, wish list, but it should be. I like that too. Helps me sleep. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, it's rela it has like this, it's like, it kind of reminds me to tell you the truth of Ativan. That like relaxing sensation you get from Ativan. That's what cyclobenzaprine is like. It's just, ugh. Okay, Ativan is a benzodiazepine and not even in the same family as what she's on, which is Flexeril, which is the lowest muscle relaxer that exists. 
your teeth are visibly rotten. Thank you. That's what happens when you get a tongue ring. No, that's not what happens when you get a tongue ring. That's what happens when you abuse drugs for most of your life, when you don't have any dental hygiene, when you don't go to the dentist, when you don't address the problems, unless they can get you Vicodin and then you'll go to the dentist. But other than that, nope. <laughs> My teeth all broke apart because of a tongue ring. I was, I was warned by a dental assistant, like, 10 years ago. She was like, you know that tongue ring you have? is going to cause micro fissures in your teeth and your teeth are all going to break out, break apart. I'm like, no, it's not. Come on, you're crazy. She was right. Then how do you explain what's going on with the top four teeth that are rotting from, from the inside out? How do you explain that? Tongue ring? Pretty sure it doesn't work like that. It's never worked like that for anyone the I knew ring who had a tongue away ring. The bone in your mouth, yeah. Lip piercings also cause that? Ah, yeah, it's out now. I have no more tongue ring, but my teeth are all fucked up because of it. No, your teeth are all fucked up because of you. You did that to your teeth. You did it. Yeah. Meds can also ruin teeth. My mom was on hard prescription meds for her RSD and they ruined her teeth. Yeah, they also cause rashes. Like the Cymbalta causes like a rash on my body where sometimes I have to get like that, um, that like, oh, what is it? That like, I forgot what it's called, but it, it's very close to Desitin, you know. <laughs> Desitin is for diaper rash. <laughs> Mother of the year. Thought you would know that. Guess not. Oh my God, my running. I didn't know that. <laughs> huh. Well, I've been on my meds for so long now. But I need my meds. I need them. I'd rather all my teeth be out and I just eat soft food for the rest of my life than being in horrible, agonizing pain. Yeah. I'd rather have no teeth than agonizing pain, I'll say that. I think a lot of Well, good thing you've got a head start on that because you only have a few few teeth left to lose and then you'll be right there eating people soft people would feel food. that way if they felt how bad I feel most of the time. <clears throat> Toothaches are the worst? No, no. Try it, no. I found a worse pain than toothaches. Um, it's from the arthritis in my hips. Oh my God. That is worse than tooth pain, is arthritis in the hips. And when it's flared out, oh, like you can't lie on your side when, you're, when your hips are all inflamed. You can't lie on your back because your hips are still a part of your back. Yeah, hip pain is like, oh, just imagine a really bad toothache in your hips. I don't know how else. Does anyone else find it extremely odd that Shani compares cavity pain to body pain? like osteoarthritis to explain it it's a bigger area too than like a toothache so it's like I, ugh. toothaches have made me shake in pain and cry over the sink use a mouth wash to numb it for two seconds oh yeah i've been there i've been there um what's really good is coconut oil really numbs up the gums if you have a toothache and it helps heal your mouth I love coconut oil. Coconut oil is like amazing. You can use it for your face. You can use it for your hair. You can use it for your mouth. You can ingest it. It's got like this natural pain reliever thing going on in it. Oh yeah. It always happens in the middle of the night. It's toothaches. What's worse is when you're having a C-section and the, and the pain meds wear off. Oh my God. You know what? My pain medicine wore off during my C-section too. I think I told that story already, but Shani didn't have to worry about a C-section because that 10 pounder just <laughs> flew right out of that cavernous journey that that <laughs> poor baby had to take. <laughs> I'm not built like you, Shan. You're kind of correct there. I had a tubal ligation when I was 27. Yeah, I had a tubal ligation at 27. And I remember um, I was in um, the recovery room 
And I just remember telling them to give me more morphine because my stomach hurts so bad. And that's not even... Does anyone remember the video? It's still up. The video I did called There's a Bun in the Oven. Um, that was when she was saying that she was possibly pregnant by Jason when she first moved in with him. But yet she had her tubes tied at 27. So <laughs> there was never any bun in any oven. And she knew that. Wow, the manipulation. That's not as big as a freaking C-section. But, you know, it's still like they still like fiddled with things in there. Garlic kills the nerve. Mmm. Are we really comparing a C-section to getting a tubal ligation, which is three little, little tiny nothing incisions as compared to being cut from hip to hip and having a human being pulled out of your body? Have you ever tried that? There's no comparison whatsoever. You stunata. I cannot even believe the stupidity that comes out of your mouth. I never used garlic. Oh, I'm so sorry, though, man. You have that done with your C-section, the tube ligation? Yeah, that that's that probably makes it a lot nicer. No, I, like, I would, like, whenever I had a toothache, I would take, um, you know, the BC powder, just rub it on my gums. All right, Hunter. The Kobe and Shiloh show. Hello, Kobe and Shiloh. Are they pup-pups? Kobe and Shil Shiloh. Like, Shiloh's such a good name for, like, a wolf breed. Oh, <laughs> bless your hearts. With all the tooth problems. I, like, seriously, I'm at the point in my life that I don't care if I'm physically falling apart anymore. I just want to feel better. <laughs> wow. For someone in so much pain, you seem to be having a high old time with your uh, four people in your chat. Do I have a low pain threshold? No, I have a very high pain threshold. No, you don't. You would cry over a splinter. You're the biggest hypochondriac I've ever, ever, ever come across. I can, I, I'm, I'm in moderate pain right now, so that kind of tells you, like. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> but I can do normal things with moderate pain. If it's severe, don't ask me. I ain't gonna do it. Which is always because you do nothing. Isn't it a pretty name? I love Shiloh. I love that name. It's so beautiful. Am I gonna pass out Halloween candy this year? Um, you don't really get kids here for Halloween, so no. No, screw the kids. Me and Jason are just gonna batten down the hatches and shut all the lights off and go hide and play video games all night like the losers that we are because, you know, why celebrate Halloween in any which way or do anything for your community? If the Grinch had a Halloween version, it would be you. How far is the store that Rev goes to? Uh, it could be pretty far. I'm sorry about that bumble clot. I don't have that problem. My problem is I'm usually too tired to have sex. God, Jason, imagine being a virgin till you're like 30 and then getting with this land whale and her being your first and now she's too tired to have sex with you. No wonder you were looking for prostitutes on Facebook. <laughs> Hotel parking. <laughs> it never gets old. But yeah, Shannon, that's a big yikes for me. Poor Jason. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a Halloween live and tell scary stories. Yeah. Yeah, it's sunny out. My name is so unique that only nine in the U.S. have my name and most are dead. Is it native? Or is it Russian? Russian has some wild names. My, my name is Shannon. I mean, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a unique name, but you don't see a lot of Shannons in the world. I've only met like a few Shannons in my lifetime. 
I'm it. I literally have three Shannons in my life. It's you're not unique, Shanny. Tons of Jasons. I've met tons of Ambers, Ashleys. Uh. <laughs> You have a cousin named Shannon. Oh, that sounds so good, Kevin. I like the name Lyric. If I had a girl, that's what I was going to name her. But no more kids for me. N no more kids for me. Lots of okay. A no, no more kids for you. Uh, didn't you tell everyone you were perimenopausal and going through m menopause? And didn't you just say you had your tubes tied at the age of 27? That ship has sailed, honey. Ashley's, yeah, exactly. There's so many Ashley's in this world. My therapist, never mind. My therapist, you can't say from her first name. Yeah, my, my therapist's name is Ashley, actually. <laughs> Whoever made that comment about her teeth, it stuck with her because she's trying to hide them now, I noticed. Amy's, Emma's, Emma's a big name now. Posetta's. Oh, where is that? Is that like Minneapolis? Because for me, I look at, I think of pizza in Minnesota, I think VIP pizza. Oh my God, I love VIP. Your pizza is so fucking good. That I'm willing to visit, like, Duluth again just to get that pizza. Come on, Shani. We all know New York has the best pizza in the world. Let's just stop it. <laughs> Do I like faux soup? I love faux soup. Ah, St. Paul. All right. So I was kind of right. A lot of Ella's. Yeah. A lot of Ella's. Uh. Please keep my name out of your mouth forever. Thank you. Let's see. Jennifer. There's a huge name that everyone's named Jennifer. Jennifer, Jessica. <laughs> I can't believe how much pain this poor woman is in. She's really, really struggling, isn't she? Godfather's Pizza? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. No, there are no bad areas in Duluth. I love Duluth. I like the name Luna, too. Luna Lovegood on Harry Potter. A lot of J names. Yeah, exactly. Not so much Shannon. You are just so unique, Shannon. Even though my sister-in-law's name is Shannon, my own, my best friend's name is Shannon, and my doctor's name is Shannon. <laughs> nice try, though. Hi, baby. The hubby. It's Oh my god, I love you. Thank you. Hi, Gavin. He meows every single time he comes home. I have a cousin named Jennifer. <laughs> oh my god, Godfather's dessert pizza is bomb. Yaz. Please never do that ever again. Thank you, love. You want you want me to make you a sandwich? No, that's okay. Yeah, you want food? You want food? I said you're going to get food. The boy gets his foods. Good boy. Yeah, the good boy here. Yeah. There we go. Gavin has his foods. Gavin has his Kit Kat foods because he's a Kit Kat. He's a boy. He's a Gavin's. I heard that Carrie woman wants to buy you guys food to be picked up by you, Shani. Huh? Yeah, okay. One minute. There we go, baby. Oh, it's got like that, so it kind of sticks better. I got it. Oh, man, that ass took it down. It took the camera right out. <laughs> Careful with that thing, Shani. That ass is dangerous. I think it's a few cents. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think so. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. Rev doesn't think so. He doesn't think so at all. 343. Okay. I, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Huh? I said I'll be right back. Okay. You're going to eat leftover meatloaf? Oh my god, that's awesome. 
what kind of bread and cheese I got. Okay. He got me an Italian loaf with sesame seeds. Look at that. This is like the best bread in the world. Okay, so I'm Italian and we eat a lot of Italian bread. And I can guarantee you that that loaf of bread will be hard as a rock tomorrow morning. Which just shows what a complete waste of money it was unless they eat it all tonight. So good. This, this, this beautiful loaf of Italian bread is so good. Had it many, many, many times. And then cheese. We got some New York sharp cheddar. And then, because he loves me, he got me a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so you mean to tell me that Rev walked all that way to get a loaf of Italian bread that will be stale by tomorrow, a small block of cheese, and an entire liter of Dr. Pepper because you need sodi and you don't, what? You don't have enough health problems? You, what, what is it? What's the, what's the deal, Shannon? What a complete waste of money that was and waste of time. That got, that's getting you nowhere. Her whole scheme wants to get you to pick up food. Seems lame, but if you're hungry, take advantage. I wouldn't be able to get to the place if I tried. I do shop at Aldi's. A cheese sandwich. Thank you, Miss Molly. How about bread, milk, and eggs? And why don't you get your ass up and cook something? Make some French toast or something. Oh, yum. Well, I'm sorry about that, Bumble Clot. It's, it's 2.49. Not that bad in price. I barely eat meat anymore. Nah, man. No mayo or nothing. Just plain cheese bread, man. Oh. Leftover meatballs, meat, meat, meatloaf sandwiches are delicious. But <laughs> she doesn't eat meat anymore, so <laughs> disregard. I don't buy name brands at all. Well, I do. Dr. Pepper for one. But see, when, when you have soda, why, like, I don't, I, I'm not going to drink the cheap soda because I don't like it. <laughs> and you two wonder why people can't stand you. You guys e-bag like there's no tomorrow and you have the audacity to sit here and say, I don't like the cheap soda. It doesn't taste good. Are you kidding me? You have nothing. You don't have two pennies to rub together. Beggars can't be choosy. Is that where the e-begging money goes? Not to medicine to help you guys through your mental health crises. It's to Dr. Pepper name brand because Shani doesn't drink cheap sodies. <laughs> I'd rather have water. Oh, but you told everyone that you drink a gallon and a half of water a day. So there's that. Oh, meat, meat's impossible. Like, I... I like last time I went shopping, it was like $300 and I barely got any meat. I think I got like some chicken legs for like $10. And then what's, what's really nice is they had a sale for like $2.99 on the ham steaks. Um, did I get any other meat? I got some salmon. That was really... Oh, Shani, you got salmon? Did you get any lobster by, by any chance with your EBT card? <laughs> Expensive. Yeah, I think that's it. Hamburger is 13 a pound. Oh my god. No, we don't have a Dollar General near us. Yeah, Sloppy Joe's is a good way how to do it. Um, But... What are you going to do when it's so expensive? No, I don't have a Walmart close to me. It's about 15 miles away. Good luck walking that one.
Oh, we know you couldn't make it 15 feet, let alone 15 miles, honey sweet pie. You want to make a beef stew, but beef is around $18 a pack. It's so bad. Like I said, this month, though, I've been surviving on basically what you just saw. <laughs> yeah, eggs are cheap again, and I don't have any eggs. It's amazing to me that with EBT, which is completely free food, that they're even irresponsible with those purchases. Like, that's mind-blowing to me. Hi, Gavin. He loves his foods. Dude, I called yesterday at the store to see what a box of Elvita was. It, the, the, the price shocked the living fucking shit out of me. $6.99 for a box of frickin' Velveeta. <laughs> Let me get this straight. These two can't fill out a job application, but they can call stores to see the price of Velveeta mac and cheese. I don't know how they do it either. $6.99 for a box of Velveeta. I'm like, fine, I'll have Kraft, it's cheaper. I mean, I understood that a box of Velveeta would be more expensive than Kraft. But not that much. Stouffer's, a Stouffer's mac and cheese is cheaper than Velveeta. That's a shame. That sounds like a real tragedy you got going on. Everything's so freaking expensive. Why can't it go back pre-COVID prices? Velveeta is Kraft. But it's, but there's a difference between Velveeta and Kraft macaroni and cheese. Yeah. One's shells and Velveeta cheese and one's pasta and powder. <laughs> That's the difference. Yeah, Jimmy Dean's freaking expen more expensive than it ever has been, and I love, I love the Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches. Have you ever met a food or sandwich that you didn't like? I'm just wondering. I thought you meant just the brick of cheese. No, man. The mac and cheese. Yeah, but I don't have any McDonald's around me. Or any money to buy McDonald's. If someone sent you $20, you would spend it on McDonald's. That's something you would do. Ah, oh, bless your heart. A neighbor the other day brought over some cherry tomatoes. So I had like a little bit of um, this dressing that is, it's a Greek dressing with black olives and feta. So I, I mixed it up with the tomatoes and that was just lovely. I had that in a bowl of rice. Is that a week ago? Yeah. Okay, then I would have understood if you said Velveeta shells and cheese. Oh! <laughs> there is a difference between the Jimmy Dean and the knockoffs. All right, Gucci. All my dishes are washed. That's a good thing, not having kids all the time in your house, is things seem to be cleaner. She didn't just say that, right? Like, I'm hallucinating, clearly, because there's no way this woman just said that the the pros of not having any children around is that her house stays cleaner. That really just came out of a mother's mouth who lost her kids to CPS. Could you imagine losing your children to CPS and being like, well, my house stays clean. Like, you are a monster. A absolute monster and i cannot wait until whatever is coming to you comes to you full fucking throttle a lot cleaner i hope jason comes soon you need to wash dishes all right well i'll come back later when jason is a little like fed and not as hangry, because he's really hangry right now. Um, 
but I'll come back later. Oh, goody. And we'll talk to you. All right. Peace. Go, go do your house chores, people. It's time to do the chores. All right. Bye, guys. Hi, my lovies. I am sorry that took me so long to get up. I've been a little on the busy side um, because I had to play catch up from last week <laughs> when I was down and out. But um, I hope you guys liked it. I just, I, I watch these videos and I can't believe the level of like how low they go like it just it blows my mind that people like this exist but you guys know the the, the deal it's you, this is who we're dealing with this is who we're covering and this is who we're discussing and it's just it's like watching a human experiment it's it's unbelievable but anyway i will not chew your ear off um i hope you guys have a wonderful week i have another video that i will try to get done uh either tomorrow or the next day and then um i do uh want to go live soon i'm just i'm just trying to figure out how i'm going to fit it in <laughs> to my day it's just very difficult for me at the moment but i will figure it out eventually i love you guys thank you for your support please hit the like on the way in or the way out and i'll talk to you guys soon love you guys bye and there's nobody out there like it like I am There's nobody